one of the most common questions is how long did it take you to produce that piece of artwork? And I often answer, it took 50 years. It takes that long to learn how to think like an artist and produce like an artist. Much like a musician takes, they say, 10,000 hours to get proficient at your talent. As an artist, it takes maybe 500 pieces. That was what I had heard in college. It takes the first 500 or practice. It seemed ridiculous at the time when I first heard that, but now looking back, it's true. The first 500 are more or less practice. And, and the expertise comes from doing it again and again and again, making mistakes, learning things as you go. Every painting to this day, I feel like I learn things I began being interested in art probably at a very early age. I have a drawing, uh, a color drawing, I guess it's Crayola of, uh, I think I was in first grade or kindergarten. Actually, I've got a couple of drawings, both with the same subject. It's a little Catholic nun standing in front of a blackboard with the alphabet above her. Those were done kindergarten and first grade. And even at that time, I was showing signs of some talent, I suppose. I can remember in first grade, though, the nun would put up our artwork in order of what was the best, or at least that's the way I felt about it. And I felt very strongly that another kid in the class, I forget his name now, he was better than I was. He could draw really well. And he always got hung up first, and I got hung up second. So from an early age, I felt a little inadequate, like maybe I needed to try harder. <laughs> I'd sometimes feel like that really pushed me. That carried over into an older brother who was an artist for many years. And uh, he was very good and he has influenced me a lot, like many of the, of the good artists throughout history that I've studied. My brother, actually, Michael, he's, uh, he's been a big inspiration. He actually did a tree series I wouldn't paint or draw trees for many years because Michael did trees until I finally realized that there's no limit on what you can do. If you want to do trees, do trees. They're a little cliche, but the trick about doing a cliche image is to own it and make it something different. It wasn't until college, and I was art theater major, as I've said. I was doing some backdrop work and theater design work and acting, but a buddy of mine came to me and was telling me he had a mural to do. This was in Arlington, Texas. He was for a hair salon, and he showed me kind of a sketch he had done, and he was asking for help. He didn't think he could do it by himself, and so I stepped in and helped him. I redesigned his his design a little bit, and we went at it. Uh, we did a mural, I think it was 30 feet by 15 feet. It was a big piece of work, and I, as I recall, we got like $600 for it. And uh, it, was, it was a girl with her hair flowing off, but I can remember thinking, well, that was kind of fun. That's a big public mural, guaranteed audience. I read one time that murals were the most democratic form of artwork because anybody can look at it. You don't have to be in a fancy gallery. They're just there to be enjoyed. As I recall, the work wasn't very good, but it was a start. And from that, I did numerous murals through college. And as time went on, murals kind of became a thing. Uh, it led into other large format work. Uh, I worked for a guy who worked uh, for some of the big movie houses in L.A. who came here to Dallas and did theater backdrops for the Dallas and Houston Opera and the Dallas and Houston Ballet Companies. And he hired me on a fairly regular basis to come and help him execute these things. I got fairly good at that. Those were large works done on the floor. We would stand on the work. We would, our brushes were at the end of a 
of a bamboo stick and you would paint on the floor standing there over it uh, working from a drawing that helped me learn large format work did a lot of those did a lot of backdrops over the years uh, that led to more refined murals in private homes uh, as well as oh gosh I did work for Six Flags both here in the Dallas Fort Worth area and, and in St. Louis area I designed and executed backdrops and stage props for for the Six Flags company uh, there was a time when we did seasonal display work for a drug store chain and grocery store chain doing Christmas and Halloween and Valentine's Day it was kind of silly but it paid well I remember thinking I was making more than most of my friends executing these things we I had about a 30 store account and that came around I don't know five or six times a year for the different holidays uh, so the large format work led to more refined work in private homes uh, did a lot of mural work and then that led to a lot of ceiling work was doing a lot of domes and ceilings like the whole Michelangelo thing for a long time the uh, old world look was very popular we did a lot a lot of projects like that that was a, a lucrative business and went along for a good 20 years 15 years I did those kind of things and until I started well at during that time I was also doing my own work I was in several galleries over the years uh, numerous galleries that sold a lot of work uh, that seemed to work nicely and some of the circuit board stuff went through the galleries uh, some of the tree stuff went through the galleries uh, over time though I discovered these fine art shows and realized I could sell my work better than anybody else and that took off and never really looked back do those all the time now my influences come from mostly the impressionist painters the French impressionist Vincent van Gogh is big I really like his work. When I go to a show of the Impressionist, I always go right for Vincent Van Gogh's work. There's something about his work that's alive and vibrant and colorful and soulful. The Tree series was was definitely uh, influenced by Gustav Klimt and his work, uh, shapes and colors and gold leaf. Uh, John Singer Sargent is one of the one of the best painters and the one of the, painters I respect the most his work especially in person has this quality of freshness of just being dashed off uh, it's it's incredible work uh, in person I'm always mouth agape impressed by that Picasso certainly impressed uh, influenced a little of everybody the cubist influences come from Picasso's work and, um, you know, as I've said, my brother influenced me a little bit, uh, mostly because he was there. He was my older brother, and older brothers do have a way of influencing you. There's this quality of, I got to try a little harder, always. This feeling of insecurity or inadequacy might have come a little from his influences. And I, I think that's a good thing. I think we should never get too complacent and think we're too good or or too set or that we've gotten somewhere I think you should always remain a little hungry and always feel a little like you don't quite you're not quite there you need to try a little harder because once you think once you've gotten there it's it's over you got to keep keep discovering new things about yourself and and uh, like I say that that insecurity is is a driving force it's a good thing <laughs> message a message I, I suppose my message has always been more of just of a lighthearted I want to I want to put a smile on people's face I, I've dabbled with more serious matters and maybe political matters but the reality is that's too serious and it's it's not fun <laughs> I'd rather people just get 
some enjoyment out of my work, get a smile. I, I seem to enjoy seeing people smile more than anything when they react to my work. I know artists want some reaction, some emotional response from people. There are artists who want to evoke anger or sadness or terror or disgust or many other emotions you could evoke from your artwork. Me, I'd just as soon have somebody smile. <laughs> There's too much horror in the world to go adding to it. I'd rather add some pleasure to the world, I suppose.